Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today, uh, back to working on my lead attachment uh, for my K&T Miller machine. And uh, you guys have been following along, been trying to get together a full set of all the gears and change gears. We've had some real good luck with that. And today's project is uh, on my stack of change gears. I'm missing two different sizes to have a complete set. Uh, one of them is a 20 tooth and one of them is a 24 tooth. This is uh, basically my complete set that I have missing those two gears. These are duplicate gears over here. These, so these are extras. I basically was able to buy a, a two different sets of change gears, two different incomplete sets of change gears. Uh, and between the two, I put together a set missing two. So on those two that I'm missing, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make them. And, uh, but because of this internal spline that we have on the inside of these gears, it's going to be not impossible, but it's going to require a lot of work for me to be able to create that. So instead of starting from scratch, I'm just going to use some of these duplicate gears that I have as blanks. So basically we're going to take and turn down some of the teeth on some of these larger ones to get it down to the right size and cut the proper number of teeth in there to get to where we need to be. So again, I'm missing two of them. One of them is a 20 tooth and one is a 24 tooth, which are both smaller gears we actually start at size 20 and go up to uh, what was the biggest one in here 40 tooth so uh you know we're basically th th it requires two 20 tooth gears this is a 20 tooth gear and when you lay this 20 tooth gear on top of this bigger one here which is a 26 tooth i got enough meat in there to make that size gear. So I've pulled out two of these that we're going to be using. And the game plan is, is I'm going to go over to the lathe, turn these down, and we'll go over to the milling machine and actually cut the teeth in there. Today, we're probably just going to be turning them down. I need to find another involute cutter. I don't have one of the, I got one cutter that I need. I'm missing one cutter. I need to find one of those. And we'll probably just wait and set up the, the dividing head once I get them all on there. Now, to turn these, uh, I'm going to use this shaft. Now this uh, little drive shaft is one that I made in a previous video. This is actually one of the missing parts that I had from my lead attachment that I had to make and uh, I, I've still got to make the bearing block for it. I've got those patterns sent out to the foundry right now. I'm waiting to get those castings back to make that uh, holder that holds this shaft. But in the meantime I can use this shaft uh, to, as a mandrel to turn these gears because again, I need that spline on the end. So we'll just put the gear up on the shaft, get them lined up here. There we go. We'll tighten that up on there. We'll set this up on the lathe, get it running true. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut these te teeth off and get it down to the correct diameters that I need for my two missing gears. So let's go over to the lathe and get set up and we'll get this project knocked out. So I got my gear mounted on the shaft and we've gone over to the lathe. I've put this into a four jaw chuck and I'm going to dial this in to get it running perfectly true. You know, yeah, I could have thrown it into a three jaw chuck, but it would have had a couple of thou run out, which is typically what you're going to have with a three jaw chuck. So in this four jaw, I can dial it in and get it a lot more running true than what I can get on my, on my three jaw. So anyway, we're going to just go ahead and do that real quick. So, all right. So let's see here. We want to find that low right there. I'm going to zero that on the indicator and we're going to loosen that up just a little bit and we'll flip it over 180 degrees. And what I want to do is take roughly half of that. So is that 10, 20, 30, uh, 10, 20, 30, almost 40 thou. So we need to bring it in about 20 thou, maybe just a little shy of 20 thou, which is going to be somewhere right along in there. And now I'll probably need to do the other side. So uh, again, we'll zero, let me loosen that one up, come in this way, again, take about half of that, and now we're down to about five or six hour run out. There's our low, zero, and we'll loosen that up a little bit. All right, tighten that up. Again, loosen that up a little bit, flip it around, snug it back up. A 
little bit more. Got it down to about a thou there. That's gonna be close enough. We got it within a thou. So uh, that's probably gonna be as good as we can get it. All right, let's get ready to turn that uh, end down. So we're gonna start with this one. This is the smaller of the two gears I'm gonna cut down. And this is gonna end up being a 20 tooth uh, uh, gear. I need to get the diameter down to 2.2 inches. And we're starting uh, roughly here at 2.8 inches, including those teeth. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just get all the teeth cut off. We'll take another measurement and get it down to that final 2.2 uh, diameter. So we'll just come in here and touch off and cut across there. See where we're at. to get a rough idea of where we're at for about two and a half. teeth turned down now that should be like a little bit smoother turning and we've got a little over a hundred thou still to come off so I'm gonna dial in two four we'll dial in 80 thou I got about 23 more thou to come off. Just dialed in 20. Fifteen there, a little bit lighter cut this time, so I think this will do it. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna dial in the straight fifteen. Yeah, and we are dead nuts on right there. That's perfect. All right, I'm gonna chant for those edges. Just come in here and put a nice little chamfer on both sides. And that one is done. All right, we're gonna put our other gear on here and uh, get it turned down to size as well. 
We've got our second gear in here. This one is going to become a 24 tooth gear, 10 pitch, 24 teeth, outside diameter, doing the math, comes out to 2.6 inches. And we are starting out at 3.1 inches. So uh, again, I'm gonna get those teeth cut off and we'll go from there. Now, cutting those teeth is, is, is an interrupted cut, so it's kind of a rough cut but we're just gonna take our time. I noticed uh, before when I was uh, going down through there, it was kind of cutting a taper. The vibrations were causing my dials to move around a little bit. So uh, no big deal. Uh, but if you look right there, it's not wasn't quite touching. Once we get into solid metal, that kind of goes away. But uh, we'll get through this. another just get a measurement if I remember right this one's gonna be pretty close to being just right under those teeth so I got 150 more thou to take off let me uh, dial in another hundred We got about 50,000 more to take off. Let's try this. Looks like we're cutting solid now. We got all those uh, teeth out of there. And yeah, let's get another final measurement here, or not final. I need about 20 more thou. So I'm on, I'm gonna do 10. Just because I interrupted cut last time, just wanna make sure I got a good measurement for this last cut. Got all the spring out of everything. Let's see where we're at now. And yep, 10 more. Just dial it in. And this should be our last cut. I'm gonna measure it here and not drag my tool back across there because I don't want those tool marks in there. That is meeting right on the money, 2.6 inches. So uh, we're good. And again, we'll chant for those edges. Just doing that by nothing fancy, but uh, there we go. We have our two gear blanks cut. Well, there we go. We got our turning done and have these two gear blanks ready to cut the teeth on. And like I mentioned before, I've got to come up with the, another involute cutter and I'm just going to wait and do these together rather than setting one up and then having to, I might have a job for the mill in between there. So it'd be easier just to set them up one time. Uh, it will be a different cutter. Like I said, this is a 10 pitch uh, for the 20 tooth, for the 20 tooth gear, I need a number six involute. And uh, these are 14 and a half degree pressure angles. Uh, I've got the number six uh, for the 24 tooth though. I need a number five cutter. 
normally on these involute cutters you have a set of eight cutters that will cut a range from basically a rack up to several hundred teeth and uh, because the geometry of that tooth changes based on the number of teeth you really have to use the right cutter uh, in that range and like I said we need a, a number five for the 24 tooth one I don't have a number five uh, it's kind of aggravating I've got a drawer full of involute cutters over here and I, and I've said this before it seems like every time I go to do a job I never have the one I need <laughs> uh, and and that seems to be very true but um, anyway we'll source one I'll look and see I, I like finding the old ones uh, to me they're just made out of better steel um, most of the new ones that you get are made in China and honestly I've had good luck with them I've I've been ordering them from uh, Travers tool uh, they're just not very far they ship just right down the road from me well over a state but not very far they're a real quick turnaround and they're reasonably priced but uh, I prefer to find an older one if when I can just because I think the steel's better and will hold up fine but for one tooth yeah the Chinese one I mean this it'll be more than adequate and that may be what I end up having to do but we'll see if we can find find the right cutter and uh, we'll come back in and set up to cut those gear teeth uh, over on the dividing head on the horizontal mill and uh, we'll be doing that hopefully soon and but with that that is going to be a wrap for today again I apologize this is a short video but I got to see some turning uh, on a mandrel uh, anyway there we go we'll uh, be back with you shortly with another video on something going on out here in the shop there's always something we're working on uh, about to get back to work on the, my metal planer uh, I've been the first couple of weeks of January this year I was on the road traveling so I just haven't had a lot of time in the shop since uh, since Christmas uh, but we're about to be back home for a while so hopefully I'm going to be able to get that planer moving back along in the right direction as well guys uh, that will be a wrap on this video as always thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already those thumbs up and comments are appreciated and guys we'll catch you on the next video thanks for watching